Doc on the Run. We help injured runners run. Today on the Doc on the Run podcast, we're talking about my stress fracture framework simplified. If you're a runner and you get a stress fracture, the number one most important thing that you do is to actually get it to calm down while you maintain your running fitness. And based on those ideas, I built a framework that I've been using for years with injured runners who want to get better, want to get it healed, and want to get back to running. And I'm going to go through my stepwise process with you, what I call my framework of how I do this. And where this comes from and why I'm doing this episode today is that In a few days, I'm actually giving a lecture at the International Foot and Ankle Foundation meeting, which is one of the conferences where doctors go to get their continuing medical education credits. I've been asked to give a lecture called Stress Fracture Management Paradigms for Athletes. And a paradigm really is just a framework. So how does this work? Well, it's really simple. There are a few things you have to do. Seven, in fact, seven different things that you've got to do uh, that are... Um, the ways that I go through this. So number one is goal. Number two is severity. Number three is inflammation reduction. Number four is stress reduction. And number five is fortify the bone. Six is workout. And seven is run. So let's talk about these really quickly so you can understand the basic strategy behind how I treat athletes with stress fractures. The first thing is your goal. The biggest mistake is people want to know um, what kind of injury do I have? What is the injury? And then focus on the injury and forget about the goal. So any injured runner cannot figure out how they're going to get from point A to point B to knowing what your uh, pace is going to be. So you have to understand if you're going to direct your recovery correctly, you want to know the speed at which you need to get someplace, where you're going to get to that place. And um, in addition to that, as physicians have to be able to tell you about your expectations, whether they're reasonable or not. So if you break your femur and it's actually broken and you can't walk on it, well, obviously you can't run a marathon this weekend. But in many cases, in fact, I would say most of the time that I talk to injured runners who have a race planned and they get a stress fracture, I help them figure out how to actually complete that race without making the stress fracture worse. But you can't do that without a goal. You got to figure that out first. And then second is severity. So you need to know how bad it is. Uh, And you can do this a couple ways. You can do this by sort of monitoring your pain and seeing how bad it is. You can sometimes do it with medical imaging like MRI or ultrasound or x-rays. And sometimes you can do it from testing on your own. I usually use a combination of those things when I talk to injured runners. But everybody wants to believe that imaging is the most important, and I don't believe it is the most important. But you've got to figure out how bad it is so that you can assess how quickly you can actually go along your pace and how realistic it is for you to achieve your goal. The next thing is inflammation reduction. So you've got to figure out, I've done other episodes on this, but you have to figure out how much pain that you have that you're attributing to the stress fracture is from the tissue injury or the fracture in the bone and how much is really from the inflammation that's causing stretching of tissues and causing pain just because there's excess fluid in there. That's the next thing. The fourth thing is that you've got to actually do some stress reduction. Remember, it's called a stress fracture. It's not called a running fracture. It's not called a run too much fracture. It's called a stress fracture. So the next thing you have to do is once you figure out where you're going, you're figuring out how fast you're going to try to get there and you figured out how bad it is, well, you've got to figure out how you can reduce the stress and strain on the stressed bone if you really want it to improve quickly. It's really that simple, but many people skip this step. And then, of course, you have to strengthen the bone. You need to let it heal. You need to get it better. You need to fortify the bone. You've got to get it stronger, and you've got to do that as quickly as possible with every tool at your disposal, and you have to understand those. The next thing is you've got to work out. Again, if you have a goal, and you want to do a race, whether it's the, the Houston Marathon at the beginning of the year or it's the California International Marathon in the fall, you cannot lose all your running fitness. Remember, waiting is not a treatment plan. Waiting is a way to get weaker. You have to work out and you have to add exercises that will maintain your running fitness without stressing the bone. It's not complicated. And then the next thing is you have to run. So you have to test and retest and you have to systematically return to running while tracking your pain and your progress the same way that you would track stuff if you're training for a marathon. And that's really it. That's my seven-step framework. And if you understand all of those pieces, 
you will definitely get back to running a whole lot faster. But you have to understand those pieces. And if you talk to a doctor who seems to be missing some of those pieces, it's your job to bring it up. Now, if you want to learn more about stress fractures and runners and more of these specifics, well, you can uh, sign up for the Stress Fracture Masterclass. It's a deep dive into all things stress fracture related about really the specifics of the strategies that I use with injured runners. And you can get it for free at docontherun.com slash stress fracture masterclass. So go check it out and I'll see you in the training. Doc on the Run. We help injured runners run.